Hey guys, if there's one thing I can say about my early days of Airsoft, it's that I definitely wish there were a few things I knew before jumping in head first, or quite possibly wallet first. Let's not waste any time as I tell you the six things I wish I knew before getting into Airsoft. Yeah, just hold on a sec there, Rambo. You really, really don't need to buy a plate carrier before your first day of Airsoft. You don't need all those extra pouches for literally nothing that important because let's be honest, you and I both know half of what makes Airsoft fun is looking good. Well, looking good doesn't mean you play good, now does it? Let's be real. I know you're gonna buy all that gear anyway, but something I wish I knew was that I really should have learned what was truly important on the shopping list before just, you know, buying the entire shopping list. I too bought a bulky vest I never liked. I bought a shemog I never wore. I got a one point sling I never enjoyed using. The list goes on and on. My best advice to you is that you just play with the necessities before truly learning what you want your ideal kit to look like. Yeah, I made this mistake several years before ever visiting a real airsoft field. I had, I kid you not, a $700 airsoft gun under my bed for about six years before going to an airsoft field for the first time. Sure, I used it to plink in the backyard, but my intention was to use it for airsoft many years ago. I just never did. I was too young, and I didn't know any better. Do yourself a favor use a rental gun for at least your first time. Yes, most rental guns pretty much suck and usually don't have optics. Plus, you're probably going to be stuck with something like .2s and won't have any good range. But, you gotta try airsoft before spending like 400 bucks on your own gun. I do, however, recommend getting your own gun after your first time because it really should only take one time to see if you like airsoft or not. Just don't be like me and have an expensive toy under your bed that you never use. Mm -hmm, that really didn't sound right. Sometimes, just because there's an internal gearbox part that is advertised as an upgrade doesn't mean you should immediately buy it and do open heart surgery on your airsoft gun. It's gonna take time to get comfortable taking your gun apart, and I'm just talking about something as simple as taking apart your hop-up. When it comes to gearbox maintenance or upgrades, you really need to take a minute and just educate yourself on what you're getting into. An airsoft gun's warranty is usually void once its user cracks open the gearbox. Plus, if you don't know what you're doing, trying to put it all back together once a few gears or springs come flying out can be really, really, really depressing especially if something just breaks. Trust me, I've made this mistake. My Crytac CRB Mark II remembers that mistake too, and it remains in my spare parts bin for that reason. Just kidding, it's in the garbage. During my days of paintball, I never really used zoomed optics while playing. During my early days of airsoft, the importance of a zoomed optic didn't click in until I obviously got my sniper rifle. To be honest, since then, I haven't looked back. A zoomed optic like a scope, ACOG, or just a magnified red dot is so much better than just an ordinary red dot or iron sights. Now, that does sound like a little bit of a hot take, so give me a moment to explain. 
I'm talking about outdoor airsoft here. If you're playing indoors, I really don't care what you use. You could put a banana on your top rail and use that for a sight picture. The biggest advantage I have out there is my ability to see further than the naked eye. Yes, of course BBs don't go insanely far, but I'm not talking about shooting at insane distances. Something like a two to five times variable zoom is perfect. Being able to spot enemies at distances, even just for intel purposes, is such an advantage. On top of that, when I'm shooting, I don't have to squint my eyes or take any guesses on where my BBs are landing. A zoomed optic never lies. If you want to get kills, an optic with some sort of magnification is so, so helpful. This is sort of on the same topic as optics, but just a different point I wanted to separate. Make sure your optic, whatever it is, has good eye relief. I've definitely made the mistake of buying an optic or scope and not realizing it had poor eye relief, rendering it pretty useless in the realm of airsoft. If you don't know, eye relief is the measurement of distance between the shooter's eye and their optic where a full sight picture can be seen. An optic with great eye relief allows the shooter to keep their face further away from their optic and still be able to see clearly through said optic. An optic with poor eye relief requires the shooter to keep their eye very close to the optic to get a clear sight picture. The reason I'm bringing this point up is because in airsoft, everyone has goggles and masks on which can easily obstruct the shooter's ability to get close to their optic. Ever tried to use the cheek rest of your stock when you have a mask on? Yeah. Impossible, right? Getting your face nice and close to your optic is pretty much impossible unless you're foregoing lower face safety or using shooting glasses instead of goggles, which wouldn't fly with me, personally. From past experience, best advice I can give here is to do research or look up reviews on whatever optic you're interested in. The most important thing about optics in airsoft hands down, is eye relief. I don't care if you buy something cheap that might not hold zero on a real gun, eye relief is all that matters here. Likewise, I don't care that you spent $700 on an optic either, because if it has poor eye relief, well, that sucks for you. Also, try a rail riser with your optics. It really helps so you don't have to crane your neck all the time when you're shooting. And last, but certainly not least, knee protection. I cannot stress this enough, guys. Save your knees. When I first started playing, I didn't really have a solid game plan when it came to protecting my knees. And you really want to be careful because when you're flying around the field and you got to drop to the dirt or just kneel down real fast, the last thing you want to do is smash your knee on a tiny rock you didn't notice until it's too late. The longer you protect your knees, the longer you can enjoy things like airsoft. There's tons of options for knee protection, guys. There's knee pads, combat pants with built-in knee pads, or my personal favorite, casual style motorcycle pants, which you can find online. They come in all sorts of colors like green or tan and have built-in knee pads under the fabric, durable enough to fall off a motorcycle at least once. That sounds good enough for airsoft. Anyway, just thought I'd mention knee protection. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right, guys, those are the six things I wish I knew before jumping into airsoft. Let me know in the comments if you can relate to any of these six things, or if there's something else you wish you knew before getting into airsoft. I'm sure we could all use a little extra advice, especially if it saves money. That's the best kind of advice. Take care, guys. See you next time.